Working full-time at minimum wage should not condemn anyone to poverty. Yet for many Americans, that is the unfortunate reality. It's not about surviving day to day, it's about having the means to thrive, save, and invest in a better future. Firstly, let's talk about the current minimum wage in the United States. At a mere $7.25 per hour, it falls significantly short of providing workers with a fair and livable wage. This amount has remained unchanged for over a decade, while the prices of goods, services, and housing have continued to soar. To put things into perspective, let's compare our minimum wage to that of other developed countries. Countries like Australia, France, and the United Kingdom have minimum wages far higher than the United States. For instance, Australia's minimum wage is over $15 per hour, more than double what American workers are entitled to. Moreover, when we factor in the inflation rate, the real value of our minimum wage has diminished over time. What once might have been sufficient to cover basic needs now barely scratches the surface of everyday expenses. While it's commendable that some states have taken the initiative to set their minimum wages at $15 or higher, the reality is that many workers across the country are still struggling to make ends meet. This brings us to the heart of the matter, the problems caused by a low minimum wage. Let's consider a stark example. How many years of saving, after deducting living expenses, would it take for a minimum wage worker to afford a college education, something often associated with the American dream? The answer is staggering and highlights the systematic barriers faced by low-income individuals and families in accessing higher education and upward mobility. According to a 2024 article by Stacker, the average millennial making minimum wage would have to work almost 3,400 hours in order to pay off their college tuition, compared to what the average boomer had to work a fraction of the time at just over 1,400 hours. Minimum wage positions and jobs are often disregarded as so-called starter jobs staffed by teenagers and young adults, many of whom still attend school and or have additional financial and lifestyle support from their parents. This presumption, however, is false. In 2021, it was found that 60% of fast food workers alone are over the age of 20, and one in five are over 35. These are full-grown adults, many of whom who have people who financially depend on them, causing these people to often have multiple jobs or work long taxing hours. What can we do to address this pressing issue and ensure a more sustainable future for all? We must start by raising the federal minimum wage to a level that reflects the true living costs and economic realities. Incremental steps must be taken to reach a minimum wage that allows individuals and families not just to survive, but to thrive. It is, in my opinion, the job of a government to serve, protect, and fight for the prosperity of its citizens. However, under the current governmental statute of federal minimum wage, as well as the lack of basic public services such as health care, affordable housing, and access to food, which most other first world countries provide, the government isn't providing us with the tools that the vast majority of U.S. citizens not only need, but deserve. It's time to acknowledge that a working wage should be a livable one. By raising the minimum wage to a level that provides a fair and livable income, we can create a more just and prosperous society where everyone has the opportunity to succeed.